Hey guys, these stories are going to be from a guy that says he's from Bulgaria. So we're going to jump into those real quick. And if you have any uh, suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, then you can drop them in the comments. And just to avoid the confusion from last time, I'm not from Bulgaria. I am Canadian. I just found these stories and they were compiled in like a big picture kind of thing. So yeah, let's dive into those. And uh, once again, you can pull up a stump and... Yeah, here we go. I grew up in a small mountain town, literally surrounded by woods and swampy areas and a bunch of lakes. So you could say it was the perfect place for creepy stuff to be happening all the time. And I'm going to share a few, maybe more than one, story from that town. So I was about seven or eight years old, and I was living in an apartment building near a cemetery and a hospital. The cemetery was about two minutes away from the hospital, but they both were in the woods. So one evening, I go to sleep after my parents, and I'm feeling like a grown-up for doing so. So I put on my pajamas to make my bed. The bedroom window faces the woods nearby, and it's really dark out, but it's kind of somewhat calm. But I keep looking at the forest before hitting the sack. Look at the time, and it's about 11.45 p.m. I don't really remember. I'm not really sleepy, but I know that my parents will be angry if they found me up so late. I decided to finally lay in bed, and I glanced one last time at the woods. WTF. I see three figures in the woods that are clearly not just lights. I stare in their direction until figuring out what ex just exactly what it is. Uh, people really pale, almost transparent. It's silent around, so I can hear them moan and kind of hum, I guess. I'm not really sure what the sound was. It's this weird, nude-looking people that are probably on drugs, I assume. And I go to sleep, and I wake up the next morning, and there's nothing weird anywhere. I go to school, tell my classmates, and they just tell me I'm crazy. And I never speak of it again until ten years later. So one time, ten years later, I was chilling with my friends, and one of them says, let's tell scary stories. Friend number two goes, I know one that's real and actually happened in this town. And we're like, okay, go ahead. He then proceeds to tell a story that back then got me really screwed up. So the hospital in town has two underground floors and you can reach them with one of the elevators. Basically, floor one is a morgue and floor two is the vivisection floor. And friend number one asks, WTF is a vivisection floor. It's where they operate on the living, conscious people, experimenting on them and stuff. And we think, haha, you know, he's just making up a story. But friend two insists to keep listening. So the story goes that back in the day, like 15 to 20 years prior, people in the town went missing. No one knew why and no one really spoke about it. And soon after, some kids found a weird tunnel coming out of the hospital into the middle of the woods. People went to see, and it was all abandoned, and there was all hospital equipment and empty hospital beds in there. Later, they realized that it was a vivisection room. So friend two continues. They were performing experiments on people, and they had taken their eyes out, they had cut their ears off, and they kept them in the dark for months, sometimes longer. Eventually, three of those people they were experimenting on escaped and were never found again. They are said to be really pale, almost transparent. People have seen them in the woods around town and they say that they only scream, moan, and hum, and they don't really speak. And then he says, you know, you know, whatever, man, you know, that, that's not true. And his friend says, whatever, it's what many people are saying around town since as long as I can remember. I don't say anything else. Uh, but I'm really creeped out because I never told these guys about the group and yet they knew the entire story about it. And I still think to myself, you know, that there's no way this is real and that kind of thing. I'm just trying to tell myself that, you know, I was just a kid and what I saw was like, you know, kid logic and all that. So anyway, as we fast forward one week, I go to the hospital with my friend and he needs to take the elevator. I remember that one of the elevators is said to have the buttons to the secret floor. So we try out all four elevators, and one of them happens to have two unmarked buttons underneath the basement button. 
And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. So I push the button, and nothing happens. So I wait a bit, and then I push the buttons again. And there's, again, nothing. Then I see my friend's doctor and ask him about the morgue under the hospital. And he says, this hospital doesn't have a morgue. Stop asking about it. And he says, okay. So we go to the elevator one last time, push the button, and surprise, surprise, nothing happens. And at this point, I'm thinking that my friend was just lying and, like I said, making up a story. So I go to my grandmother's house much later, and I ask my grandma about the uh, pale people in the woods. And then she tells me to never speak about that. And then says it was, oh, well, what you saw was, like, just probably someone out in the woods having fun. And then he says that, well, like, they were translucent and they were naked. And then she just won't talk about it. So the guy leaves his grandmother's place and just kind of, he's still spooked about it. And he says he spends the next two years looking for the pale people again around the woods, but he can never find them. He even walks into some of the abandoned military tunnels around the woods and still can't find them. So he just kind of leaves it and decides to be spooked about it forever. If that particular story is true, then I think it's possible, very possible in fact, that the hospital just, uh, like those two buttons don't do anything anymore. Maybe they did it one time, but not now. And the fact that his grandmother wouldn't talk about it and that just the doctor was kind of short with them kind of makes me think that there definitely was something going on. It's like one of those things that they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to remember it or something like that. Anyways, you tell me what you think happened. Real or fake, maybe embellished, let me know. Before I talk about what happened, there's some backstory to this. Uh, the apartment building that I was living in was literally across the street from the woods. It was my house, and then a street, and then woods. At night, it would be pretty creepy, but my best friend had it worse because he lived down the same street, but on the other side of it, so pretty much his building was just surrounded by the thick forest. So he and I both experienced some pretty creepy things together. So at this point, me and my friend are about 15 or 16 years old, and we're walking around the woods at around 7.30 p.m. We spent a big portion of our childhood and the teen years lurking these woods, looking for stuff, and just generally walking around. We walked near a big water pipe that was going through the forest. Uh, we usually go there to hang out, smoke and drink and all that stuff that teenagers do. Uh, so we're about 100 to 130 meters away from the pipe, when this smell hits my nose with the force of Old Spice Double Sun. And I think, oh god, what is that? And my friend says, it must be like a dead animal or something like that. It's terrible. So we walk about 70 more meters and, oh my god, there's a mass grave of dead animals in the middle of the woods. Like 30 to 40 animals just all strewn out. And we go back and get some sort of face masks because we can't handle the smell. So we go back with our cheap dollar store face masks and they don't really help at all to be honest. But my mate goes into the pit with the animals to kind of just poke around for a bit. The idiot actually pokes him with a stick for 15 minutes and then he gets bored and then gets out. We head back to town and call up our other friends, tell them what happened. No one really believes us, so we get flashlights, because by this point it's getting quite dark, and we want to go there as soon as possible. We head into the woods and the smell is even stronger at this point. We go into the pit and even more animals are there than were there before. This isn't possible because it's so late, and we never saw anybody go there, and we were there ourselves for quite a while. So I look around and tell my friends that we should go because whoever did this is all kinds of crazy. So we go back into town and everyone is just kind of screwed up from what they just saw. So we tell even more people about it the next day. So fast forward like 17 hours and we go back into the woods with more people and we go to the grave location and there's nothing. No smell, no animals. 
The hole is there, but it's empty, and there's no blood, no animals, no nothing. And everyone is laughing at me at this point. No one believes us, and there was no grave there ever since. We still talk about it sometimes, but some of the friends who were there say they're not sure if it was really there. This one guy says that there was nothing there, but a lot of us definitely remember it happening. And I think that a lot of them that were there are just trying not to think about it myself. So what would you think about that one? Real or fake? Anyways, on to the next story. Around my town, there are many people who make a living from stealing metals and other things that can be sold, like TVs, car radios, fridges, pretty much anything. Uh, we all call them gypsies, but I don't know if they are or not. Near my building in my hometown, there's three entrances to military tunnels that were used as bomb shelters and kind of like defense against enemy forces, I guess. We started exploring them as kids and then it gets kind of interesting from there. So me and my friends were 13 years old at this point and we thought, hey, let's go to the tunnels. So we're in front of the tunnels after we find out which one's kind of closer to the area and we all have flashlights in hand. We walk in and our cell phones immediately lose coverage because we're literally walking through a hill. So we walk in and it's ice cold, dark but also humid. The walls are covered in weird writing and there's names of people and a bunch of numbers. It's all done with spray paint so we think not much of it and we kind of eventually barely notice it. We walk further in and there's no outside light at this point. The ground is soft for some reason. So I shot my flashlight to the ground and it's covered in black and I'm like, what is this? I asked my friend if he knows what the black stuff is, and he just says, oh, it's probably some carpets. And I think, what? Carpets in here? So we keep walking, and there's still more soft ground. One friend shines their light up at the ceiling, and the walls are now tall as hell, and there's pipes going through the ceiling. Someone asks what's in the pipes, and another friend speaks up and says that the pipes are for air coming from the outside, they use pipes to distribute it evenly throughout the whole thing. If you follow the pipes, it will lead you out through another exit where the air was coming in from. After this, we walk into a room, and the room is wider than any other room in the whole place. The ground was covered in this black dirt type stuff, and it looked like human feces. I shot a flashlight on the walls, and there's a lot of writing still. Again, the same thing. There's names, numbers. One wall says Area 51.2. And one has some weird symbols on it with, written with coal. But why coal, though? So the wall across from the entrance of the room has this altar-like stuff. And there's like every, a lot of things drawn on it, and it's just really creepy. And there's many letters and numbers that really don't make any sense to us. So we think, okay, you know, they've kind of had enough of this. But before I can say anything, someone goes, hey, let's, let's get out. And then I say, yes, let's. So on, on my way out, we hear this loud banging. Like someone's banging on the walls in the other room. And I, I think there's no one else here with us, inside or outside. No one, no one even knows that we're here. So I shine light back to where it came from and there's nothing. We keep walking forward and there's a big hole in the ground just before the exit and we all think in our being that old that is some kind of trap because like you can't really see it unless you've fallen in it before or someone told you about it. So friend one jumps over the hole and then I'm next. I jump over and hear a loud scream coming from inside the tunnels and my other friend is the last to jump. He jumps across and we just beat it out of there. Run outside of the tunnels and head to town through the woods. I call another friend to meet us there with some sort of weapon just in case. The guy shows up with a stick. I repeat, a stick. Like he can fight this like demon thing with a stick. 
But of course, by this point, there was nothing chasing us, so the other friend didn't believe us. Although, if we rewind a couple of years to when we were 10 or 11, we're walking around the woods with some people, just kind of during midday, and the tunnels are dark and spooky as all hell because it's like snowy and it's overcast and it's just kind of a depressing time. And in the woods, there's this dog that's just standing in front of the tunnel, but it's all bloody and kind of mangy looking. And the dog is just growling at the tunnel, howling at nothing. As we pass by, the dog just drops dead. So again, do you think that story was real or was it all fake? Uh, if you think it's real, then what do you think is actually going on in this Bulgarian town? There are more stories to this, which I'll put in another video, because again, I have slow internet and it takes forever to upload a YouTube video. So I'll separate the two, just to make it like a little easier on myself and my sanity. Uh, anyways, as always, uh, thank you for pulling up a stump. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. If you really liked the video, then you can consider becoming a patron. You can make a one-time donation to my PayPal. Uh, both of those will be in the description and probably in the pinned comment. So yeah, there will be a part two to this, so stay tuned for that if you like the kind of thing. Uh, anyways, have a good day. I hope the video found you well, and I hope you like the stories. They don't really involve anyone getting, like killed or possessed or any kind of you know really crazy stuff but it's just kind of spooky things that happen in a small town you know i have some of my own stories that i might share eventually but anyways yeah i'll see you again later